So Batgirl film axed by Warner Brothers will not be released on any platform. Uh, the the Good great riddance. the great in 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 epic David Zaslav just cutting stuff down one by he's the new CEO of uh, Warner Brothers Discovery not uh, and he is not having any of this what I said is uh, he's going fruit ninja mode he'll just slice anything in half it's what? just Jordan Peterson in a disguise that would be that would be <laughs> cooler. He, says, uh, he's, he had a quote where like the, I, I was listening to a quote of him earlier where he says it's not about how much it's about how good Clearly, yes. this movie uh, is not very good. The test screening. Well, now, I saw some reports saying that they're blaming it on test screenings, that the test screenings were awful, and then other people saying that they want to focus on theater releases only. But they're insisting that it has nothing to do with the quality of the film because they're clinging to the notion that this would ever have organic appeal if it were given a theatrical release. I, I a and couple, it wouldn't. The, the ginger side continues. They get rid of redheaded Barbara Gordon. That's a problem. Ooh. I have yeah. a couple questions oh, for yeah. you before I give uh, I give my take. First of all, I just want to say I was listening to a Barry Weiss podcast. With, God, I've changed. Um, and with Andrew Schultz, the comedian Andrew Schultz. Yep. And they were talking about how what's so great about HBO Max is they put all this money into shows. They have the most quality shows. They were the last to the party mm -hmm. and have the most quality shows. But one of the reasons is because they don't mind if they put a bunch of money in. And if a show sucks or it's not doing well... They'll ax it because they're it's same thing. They're going for quality. Now, my question's for you. I didn't know much about this. Um, who was the writer? What were the if you had to name like the three most woke crimes of Batgirl, what would they be? Uh, I, I wouldn't go with woke. I, I would say the, the biggest issue here is is going halfway and making it a movie on streaming rather than either doing a TV show on streaming and, or a movie in theaters. So yeah. it wasn't even the trying to pander to the left kind of the, stuff. The, the race swap uh, of Batgirl doesn't... Work. I think another issue is that they put her in this very masculine costume. Like, it didn't... It had, like, zero sex appeal. And what you would expect from Batgirl is, like... Just a the teensiest tiniest bit, yep. yeah. And she looks like, uh, she looks like she works at Jiffy Lube. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Like, what is this? They talk about like, and the, the biggest crime coming out of this is we're not going to get to see Brendan <laughs> Fraser. Brendan just... Fraser was going to be the bad guy in this movie. That would Brendan ruled. Fraser from The Mummy was going to be so was going to play Garfield Lenz as the character of Firefly in this. That, I was like, I didn't give a crap and about Firefly. Batgirl. That would have been cool. Uh, I didn't give a crap about Batgirl. I wanted to see uh, the Brendan Fraser as the bad guy in this movie. I kind of cared about the Michael Keaton cameo that was supposed to be in there. Not really. He's also going to cameo in The Flash. But maybe that's the more important discussion is michael keaton the curse because the flash i don't know if you've heard about that ezra character yeah. so maybe maybe the may, maybe the more important discussion here should not be about whether batgirl deserved to be canceled it's about whether batgirl deserved to be canceled and the flash is somehow moving <laughs> forward <laughs> sure. is the That's white the real maybe that sexism, white privilege huh? stuff is real that, maybe i had yes. it wrong all along you did that's how bad no, batgirl. ezra miller has male privilege he has uh he has uh trans non-binary privilege yeah uh because they are well it's point, like if you were given the theatrical budget you can't get away with not doing no. the release 90 million dollars they said this is one of the most expensive cancellations without release in the history of hollywood normally they would release it but just you know just dump it on hbo max and get it made. It's so bad uh, they have to bury it. And maybe have, yeah. If, 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 like, it must have been really bad in test screenings. Who wrote it? For is them it, to is fully it, go back um, on it. Totally scrapped, or yeah. is it going to be released to, no, like, DVD? Never, no, it was yeah. never Nothing? going, it was never going to be released. It come on. Never, I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm trying to think of, like, the lowest <laughs> no, form of <laughs> it coming out. Only, like, a Blu-ray special edition. Yeah. <laughs> and I looked for, like, if Leslie Grace had made any comments about this, and I looked at her Twitter, and, like, her tweet celebrating yeah. the the role is still up, like pinned on her profile, yikes. and it's just yikes. I um, used to, I mean, oh, when I when, <laughs> that's a bummer. When like when I was thinking about kind of the the woke aspect of it, what, what's a bummer? I don't, it, I, I don't give a. I, I don't think of other than the the fact that they they race swapped Leslie Grace. None of this is. Uh, has anything to do with woke? It's just a bad mm -hmm. idea. To be well, woke. no, that's very intentional and contrived. No, I'm saying, but that's the only aspect of it that I see that way. I don't know enough. There was no trailer. There's nothing. But like, in, imagine there... if it had come out. Yeah. I, I would bet a lot of money on it being a woke mess. L let me reframe it then. I think it is a. I think it's sad that I even assumed that 
because yeah. it was a female protagonist. So, like, I used to, when I was growing up... Barbara I, Gordon is a real character, though. Like, that, that there, there's a... You can do a good that, Batgirl movie. You could do an Oracle movie. You could do a Batgirl this movie. This is exactly what I was going to say. So, the, you know, Black Panther, when Black yeah. Panther was made, uh, Shang-Chi, when Shang-Chi was made, those were so... Um, authentic, mm. right? These were just films that were made by people who were passionate about the film. Uh, Simu Liu uh, is his own worst enemy as far as marketing. I, I can't stand that dude. But Shang Chi was thoroughly inoffensive as far as a I enjoyed movie it. goes. It yeah, was fun. I, I enjoyed it a lot, and I, I I do remember. I mean, this is cheesy, but it's just true. I I, I went to see it, and I walked out of the theater. I hated that ending, and I didn't love the ending either. Um, and I walked out, and I saw this dad taking a picture of these two little Asian kids, like in front of the billboard, or not the billboard, but like the cardboard cutout in the movie theater. And I'm like, that's really cool. Like, I have a lot of um, like Pacific Islanders really close to Asian, and I was like, oh, that's really that's dope, and I liked seeing that, and it was authentic. Then you compare that to say like the Ghostbusters reboot with the all female <laughs> cast or the Ocean's Eleven where it's like forced and the Ocean's Eleven one made money. That it did. One actually, yeah, that one actually. Came and no, no, no. I, I, you know, I watched it on a plane yeah. several weeks ago. It was fine, but I think that um, they because so many of these reboots or whatever they're trying to force it. Like, how, what about Garfield if it was a lady or whatever? <laughs> um, the expectations are so low that I think studio executives just pop at the idea of like a girl superhero and then they just will be okay with kind of garbage instead of make like she hulk looks terrible here's the deal marvel is diluting their material now by releasing way too many tv shows right you now it feels like homework yeah. to have to watch every show just so they can make a two minute cameo in a movie like why should i need to watch wandavision to understand the context of yeah. wanda in uh, Doctor Strange, so, so which isn't uh, is supposed to involve her uh, like for a third of the movie anyway. Homework's a great way to put it. So uh, to me, uh, what, what this says to me is: first of all, cancel the Black Canary movie instantly. Cancel it, cancel it, cancel it. I don't care about Journey Smollett. Pro cancel. I, uh, culture, I do huh? not. Uh, I can't. I don't know how far along the production is. Cancel that movie. Nobody wants to see it. Nobody liked Birds of Prey, anyways. Uh, and, and the other big thing here is just they want to, what David Zaslav is talking about. He says, we own the IP of like the most iconic characters in the world. How the F are we not making any money? Yeah. So he's saying that they want to make studio, they want to make theater quality films. $90 million, as much money of that as that is, is not a superhero theater quality film. Mm. Okay. They're dumping 200, uh, 150 to $200 million minimum to mm -hmm. stu to, to that level of movie so they can't add to it now it's already in post-production mm -hmm. they are diluting their brand by releasing more and more garbage which dc can't seem to figure their crap out no. well, so the, yeah i feel like the releasing most it does more harm than good to their name recognition and their value yeah no and i think they need like good writers you know like the the, the maybe D less writers or yeah for sure the key i mean the last dc film i loved was Suicide, the new Suicide Squad, it's because James they Gunn got James yeah. Gunn from Marvel because Marvel fired him. Then Marvel saw that and was like, we'll take you back. And now James Gunn Actually, Gunn's they, they never Guardians fired 3. him. They, they, they fired him and quietly hired him back like a couple months later uh, when once all the uh, criticism. Because they're cowards. So says, they knew they were going to do that from the start. Yeah. Those test screenings were so poorly received by moviegoers that the studio decided to cut its losses and run for the sake of the brand's future. It's about the branding for the... And remember, if all these characters are interconnected and you release this, now now she's your bat. Uh, she's your bat girl for the foreseeable future, even if nobody likes her. And to get rid of her means that they would have to first recast, which means you're going to get backlash. How dare you recast unless you make it even more progressive than that one before that? Right. Also, it's a black girl in a wheelchair. Th th then you have to. So you have to write it differently, uh, and then you have to write that recasting into the future project. Best to just scrap it now. But ninety million dollars is a very large number to take a loss on. I would love to see the, a cut of this movie and see if. It's as bad as uh, as bad. As I want to see a cut of the movie, but I also want to see like what does a test screening that bad look like? Are the audience members just throwing up? Are they screaming at the screen? What is happening? <laughs> it's also funny, like having seizures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, just like people are just anger. running out. <laughs> screaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. theater catches on fire. Someone lights it on fire just to end it early. DC is known for like hyping up their test screenings. Like, oh my god, they went and like all these people went and saw Batman versus Superman, and the executive stood up and clapped. I'm like, that didn't happen. Right. That, that, that so I so. Mean, I just feel like DC could so easily overtake. Marvel in terms of fan hype 
but they don't take advantage of what they have. They need to scrap they, everything. Right and now, there's some, and as you've said, there's some kind of curse yes. going on over them. Right now, David Zaslav is is cutting down all of the the excess fat. That's what he's known for. He is uh, he is not for overspending. Uh, he is leaning the company down, and he needs their. They need their own version of Kevin Feige over at yeah. DC, which is a very very difficult role to fill. Finding somebody who is both uh, an expert in the source material. And a studio executive. That's like right. Studio executives and comic book nerds have very little in the way of overlap. This I'm is, sorry. This is Tony uh, Khan and AEW. It's Anna, like you found a wrestling nerd who's a billionaire. Whose dad's a billionaire. Whose dad, <laughs> dad, dad's a billionaire. So you just it's, sat around watching yeah, wrestling. That makes sense. It's not, even, it's not even him. That's what I'm saying. It's it's not even him. Yeah. So, that disconnect is why these creative types uh, who are very invested in the in the source material who know every little. Uh, miscellaneous character mm. that we've never heard of and they make a movie out of it mm. they they expect that to do well with audiences yeah. and then it doesn't land like there's, Morbius yeah what there, there's just something what is that there's yeah Morbius I like I, never look, heard of it nope and, and with DC even the movies like I I like the rock I like comic books and I just like there's just something about I the not a, I don't care about Black Adam vibe yeah of every DC trailer Dude, the every, Black that Adam just, trailer was just like disturbing it was and so not bad. the enticing. Shazam trailer was freaking awesome although I hated Shazam yeah. no, I loved it I wanted to I hated it I loved it hated it although I did I, 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 I almost cried at the new Black Panther why did you hate it I don't remember you don't remember, okay? I just remember seeing it, being hyped about it, and just being like, "Well, you just said Yuck. you listen to a Barry Weiss podcast. You might like it now. You never know." <laughs> <laughs> well, I also the last thing I want to say about DC to Mary's point that it should be good, and to your point about Marvel feeling like it's homework is the DC movies I have loved: Christopher Nolan, Batman, James Gunn, Suicide Squad. Right? If you what DC should do is take advantage of the oversaturation that Marvel is giving us and just put out yeah. rarely and phenomenally. Safe, rare, and legal. Well, that's what he, oh, that, no. <laughs> that's what he said. He said it's not about how much, it's about how good. That yes. was Zaslav's quote. Yep. So if they want to do wrap everything. like DC does with their Black Label, uh, black label comics, uh, make your releases more prestigious. Uh, and people will flock to them more readily, but they're not doing that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is a sign that they're going in the right direction for that, but they had misses all last year. They did day and date releases all of 2021 for their movies, so it diluted the box office on all of mm -hmm. them. That was a mistake. I actually thought that was a good idea at first. It ended up being a huge mistake. They also, they, they asked a bunch of other stuff. Zaslav is also the guy who, get ready for this if you didn't know this, he's the one who, who axed... Uh, CNN Plus in its third week. Yeah. So you can, you can thank David Zaslav for, yeah, for bringing that to Yeah, my guy. So he's, uh, he's clearly, he's very clearly, uh, he knows a failing project when he sees he one. He sure does. I'm saying. CNN um, Plus and Batgirl. That's yeah. incredible. But dude. I just, I don't understand the, you know, cutting your losses thing. Um, if these CNN test Plus. screenings were so bad. Yeah. You're either going to lose like a hundred million dollars and by, by scrapping it entirely or you're going to lose like uh, 50 million by they still had by market. releasing it on HBO Max mm -hmm. and letting it do terribly. They still right? would have, they still would have had to market it, which is another 45 million dollars. Market it and then to break. But they but then they that would mean they're even at least, right? That that puts no, I'm saying another they would have to spend another 45 million dollars bringing the total to almost 150 million for a movie no. that was never that's essentially when you think about it, did you ever see I mean, like those, if you take the most minimal approach yeah. to marketing it oh. and then release it only on, on HBO Max. I got it. You bring back How bad the, could it possibly you be? bring back the beloved Halle Berry's Catwoman. Yes. And you combine those two and then you just release it into the wild. Or they they did a really, really bad well. Birds of Prey TV series on television oh. years ago. No way. See, oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. In like two thousand and one or something. What? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Combine oh. all that, relaunch CNN Plus, put it on CNN. CNN Plus. CNN Plus becomes almost like this satirical meta comedy channel. Blows up. That would be incredible. Put us in charge. Uh, but I'm saying, like, if Zaslav had been uh, had been in charge before, I don't think the Birds of Prey movie would have ever come out. Uh, 2002. Dina Meyer, Ashley Scott, and uh, I don't know. I bet you somebody in the chat watched it. I never watched it. Uh, There's always someone in the chat who's uh, watched Dina Meyer played something. Barbara Gordon. Dina, Dina Meyer. Also, I first. know I confidently said I don't need a computer before we went on air because I don't have one today, but can someone find out who wrote this and what they wrote? Because I'm very curious about that. Who wrote Batgirl? Yes, uh, the one that got scrapped. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, to me, they, they should. I, I don't know if the best idea if the best idea here is to, is to scrap it, but it is kind of unprecedented. Well, uh, your point. This had this had J.K. Simmons in it. This was not like a cheat movie Whoa. to make. He was playing her dad. Really? Yes. Did you see? Did he you see played, Whiplash? He was the Snyder verse uh, James Gord. Uh, oh, that's Jim Gordon. Right. So they brought him in. They brought in Michael Keaton. Like they they spent a lot of money on this movie. They just didn't spend. It, it's almost like they were in this weird middle ground where they spent the hundred million or the seventy million. They should have just spent the. 200 million made it a studio release yeah. uh, and go for it guys, but guys, it proves that they never had any faith in it to begin with the directors were the two guys who did Bad Boys for Life which was fine I loved yeah. it yeah. Bad Boys for Life was great yeah. Bad, Boy, Bad, oh, Bad Boys for Life was great yeah. um, I think setting preparing a film for release only on streaming platforms is setting it up for failure because well and Brett made a good point and not, not because of the budget because she they wrote all wrote Bumblebee they all believe in the prestige oh, okay. of a theatrical release, yeah. and it it poisons the water. Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.